All right, everyone, so welcome to the first press Q&A of this weekend. With us, we have Vincent Tong, Kyle Rideout, and Kelly Sheridan. These are usually pretty casual Q&A environments, you know, pretty much free to ask almost anything. Don't ask anything I'll have to shut you down for, because I really don't want to have to do that. And otherwise, if you'd all like to introduce yourselves in case anyone doesn't know you. Sure. Uh, I'm Vincent Tong. I am a voice actor on the show. I do the voices of uh, Prince Blue Blood, Garble the Dragon, um, oh, Feather Bangs, Flash Sentry, Donut Joe, and that's yeah. about it. <laughs> Thanks, <Wow>. Scope. You're <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kyle Rideout, and I voice Thorax. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I'm Kelly Sheridan, and I play Starlight Glimmer, and a few others, Sassy Saddles and Misty Fly, who's a wonderful, a bunch of other bits and bobs here and there. With that, who wants question one? <laughs> Go for it, Aqua. Let me jump in. Uh, so, my first question is for Kyle. Uh, I know in your past you've done a lot of stuff in the Vancouver area. You're pretty familiar with the voice acting scene around there. Was that how you first got connected with this show, or was it more of a separate like auditioning process? You know, no, it was it was through uh, yeah my agent in in Vancouver. And, um, I mean, I was working a lot with DHX and you know with a lot of the same people on Littlest Pet Shop. Um, so that's how I first got into it. And I was thrilled to be on the show. It was, it was a great group of people. And we'd worked together before. Yeah, something. Barbie. 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 <laughs> Which is different than Barbie. Yeah. yeah. She's it's a, a pirate. different. It's a different movie. Yeah, she's, she's a, a pirate. A monster pirate. A monster pirate. <laughs> Barbie. 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 That sounds like a thing. Welcome, Ken. Yeah, we gotta go. To my place. We gotta shut this down. <laughs> we gotta go to the <laughs> With bar <laughs> Yeah. And we did packages together. Packages from Planet X with Disney XD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was very fun. That was very, very fun. Yeah. Super fun. So it is a pretty insular community. You guys all sort of work together on various different shows there. Yeah, right? we see the same faces. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty uh, it's a pretty small community of voice actors out there. Yeah. Yeah. How, how big is it total? Like how many total people are in that? Sphere around six. Six. <laughs> Three. Whoever sounded familiar, I just wanted to Yeah. Exactly yeah. six. Yeah. Just six. No more. And if someone comes into the fold, we have to vote someone off. Yeah. yeah. I just assume you fought to death. Voting seems better. Well, By that's... voting them off, that is what we do. Yeah. I mean, I, I fight them afterwards, but that's just because I want to. Yeah. That's, that's not really it. We vote them off, and then I just want to beat them up. Yeah. Yeah. It's really. <laughs> no, I yeah, I think there's like a there's there are there's like a small handful of people, but there's a lot of new people coming in lately. I feel yeah into the in the fray. I feel like I'm still sort of newish. I mean, because there's people that have been doing this industry since I was a kid. I used to watch cartoons that they were on. So for me, it's like I still feel new all the time because I'm still working with these guys who are whatever age, but they still sound like you know six year olds. <laughs> so it's pretty incredible, and they're so versatile. And a lot of people, I think think that because it's only voiceover that it's a lot easier than acting on stage or acting for the screen and it's a total art that I think a lot of people take for granted it's very different and yeah you know that's different. true I just was I was just in Toronto and I was talking to some people and I said I was heading to this brony convention and they were like oh voiceover I want to be able to do that and I was like you should try but it is <laughs> like you know there is a very small group of people that do it in Vancouver even though there's a big pool of actors there that, that is the primary hub for voice acting at this point, or at least for cartoon voice acting. A lot of people based out there. In Canada, it's Vancouver and Toronto, pretty much. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Lucky. Other questions? Do you? Oh, oh. Yeah. Do you ever interact with any of the uh, of the other voice actors that do the foreign dubs for you? For example, like the ones who will do your characters in, in mm -hmm. foreign dubs. Do you ever interact with them? 
you know, do they ever I've see never, you? No. no. I, I, I was in a, a resort in Mexico once, and packages from Planet X came on, and I was like, whoa! And this guy's like, I'm not Spanish, like, the whole time, and I was like, whoa, this dude actually sounds like me speaking Spanish. Huh. And so I looked it up on, on Wikipedia, and that dude, like, does my parts in a lot of different shows oh, like he just kind of follows cool. my shows and does because he sounds like, that. like you yeah because he sounds right. like me wow. which is really interesting I, I would love to talk to him but yeah. uh, I, I have no idea how yeah. to get in contact I have no yeah I, I don't talk to him how to talk to the person not by choice I just don't know I mean we met Anna Lee right and yeah she's amazingly talented I don't talented. think she plays any of the she played the roles that you guys do play. I don't no. think she plays any of the roles that I played on the show, but she's amazing. She plays like dozens of mm-hmm. characters. She's so versatile. It's just like Celestia, Twilight, and Fluttershy, like just all of these really disparate roles. She does the Swedish dub? Yeah. Right. And a lot of singing as well. Yeah, she's got a great voice too. Yeah, she's yeah, cool. She's great. So we met her and. Um, once, uh, like about 20 years ago, they flew me to Japan to meet two of the other actresses who played a Korean, a Korean voice and a Japanese voice of an anime that I did. So the original Japanese voice and me and then the Korean woman because it was the Korean premiere but in Japan. It was really weird. Anyway, <laughs> so there were three of us who had all played the same role who got to meet in Japan. That was, that was fun. That was it, I think. Other questions? I'm setting up, believe me, I have some. Uh, for Kyle, um, yeah. <clears throat> how did you come up, how did you develop the voice for Thorax? Um, well, I was actually on vacation up at my mom's place in Vernon, and my mom is a quilter, and I actually went into her quilt room, which was good for recording sound, so I was creating Thorax in a quilt room. <laughs> And I came up with the, I sent in about four takes, and just with the description that they sent, they didn't have a picture, but they just sent like a description of the character. Um, You know, he was very, um, you know, kind of nervous and shy around people, and so that was the real thread for the character, for Thorax. Building on Thorax's voice, in the show recently, there was a whole change like metamorphosis thing and Thorax's appearance changed dramatically but his voice stayed exactly the same. Was that their idea or your idea? Like I kind of was surprised to hear his original voice come out of something twice the size of the original Right. Voice. Yeah, their their idea was to keep it the same world with a little less of the nervousness of the changeling. Only minute. So it wasn't a big change. But that was from them. Mm-hmm. The team. Yeah. In the end of Season six. He doesn't. He doesn't speak after he transforms during the finale. You don't find out until the next season. So yeah. I was like, is he gonna sound like King now or something? So <laughs> Sean Connery's voice coming in. Yeah. <laughs> we got him for one episode. We got him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah so it's time to it's time to leave the Transling Kingdom. <laughs> Other questions? Just about there. Just about there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm give you a shot. All right, more. I'll throw in one more. Um, this question is kind of for Kyle, but all three of you can obviously answer it. Um, to the best of my knowledge, this is Kyle's first BrodyCon. Uh, what do you think so far? Uh, I'm kind of blown away, to be honest. Yeah, getting up on that stage, I was like, wow. And I brought my wife, and this is her first time experiencing this, so I feel like she also could have something good to say about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty wild and pretty awesome. And I just came from uh, TIFF, uh, the Toronto Film Festival, where my films could be playing there. And so like less than 12 hours ago, basically. And so just came from that world to here, which is really, I don't know, kind of fun and interesting. So yeah, uh, how about you guys? It's You've awesome. Already... It's always awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. The scale of this one is really fun. Mm-hmm. There's just so many of you. It's great. And have you done no, Party Con before? No, this is my first time. So how do you feel? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's great. It's super fun. It's great. I love it. I love seeing everybody, and everyone's got some good energy, so it's good. Not Sculpt, though. <laughs> Sculpt's a bit disappointing. Uh, good to see you, Vincent. Uh, Hi. First of all, it's good seeing you since Brony, uh, since Everbreed. Yes, sir. Uh, 
What was your reaction to when you found out about the feedback of your character? Oh, Donut Joe? I mean, people, you know, like donuts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I enjoy donuts myself. I'm trying to watch the carbs lately. But I, I really, you know, I think that everyone wished me a happy, do happy donut day on Donut Day, which is nice on Twitter. And I think people really embrace the guy. I, I like the response. How about the actual one? <laughs> oh, all right. So, people, people, are you talking about Flash? Yeah. The initial response, I was a bit shocked. I was very, actually, scared. Because <laughs> I was going to go to my... Uh, I don't know which convention I was going to go to, but... Brony Can. It was Brony Can. And I was, like, doing some prep work, going, like, oh, I wonder what people think of this character. I'm so excited. And then I was like, hate, hate. <laughs> Who's this guy? Who's stealing my waifu? I'm like, what's a waifu? <laughs> I didn't take anything from anybody, man. <laughs> And uh, so after, yeah, reading all, I was literally like so worried that nobody was going to be at my, my autograph session, and people were going to throw stuff at me, um, but they did, they threw their arms around me with love, which is great. No, they, they embraced it, you know, they, they came up and talked to me about how, how much they didn't really enjoy the fact that Twilight had a new love interest, but they appreciated what I did, which is nice. And it's only good fun, you know? I remember there was one photo of, I was like Googling it, and there was a photo that someone made of, uh, my, there was my face, and then there was Garble and Flash. There was one other character. Oh, P Prince Blue Blood. And then it said, Vincent Tong, the voice of all the douchebags in MLP. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Someone took the time to make that. that was like, <laughs> so it was kind of fun. Uh, someone else might think what you think of one. Um, um, it, well, we have one over here. Um, what do you uh, what do you think about the fandom's reaction to uh, Starlight Glimmer? Because what we've seen so far, as far as that goes, it seems to be a mix. Sometimes people just love the character. Other times people were just like complete hate, and we're you know, kind of wondering why. What you know? So. Oh, no character's interesting unless it causes some controversy. I think, um, yeah, I think a lot of people maybe feel she's a bit threatening to that main six group and feel like she's going to suddenly become one of the main six. And I don't know if that's necessarily her role on the show. I think her role on the show is to be a bit of a disturber of things and to shake things up a little bit. But I think that main six will probably, my guess, just in terms of how they're writing the show, they, I think they're pretty protected. And then there are others who loved her as a villain but don't really love her reformed, the, you know, kind of the people that like the dark side, and I can totally appreciate that because playing her as a villain is really fun, and I miss it, so. Um, so yeah, I think it's great. I think, you know, it's, it's such a huge world, the show, and there's a little bit of something for everybody, so she's not your cup of tea, <laughs> pun intended. Um, then that's fine. I like her, I think she's sassy. <laughs> Uh, back when you first started voicing her, was there a plan at that time that she would eventually be reformed and become a semi-main character? Or was at that time it was just a not one season? I was privy to, but I think they, I, I, my assumption based on a few conversations is they, they had that planned, but I didn't know about it when I was cast. I just thought, oh, she'll be the villain, and that'll be it. Um, it was a nice surprise. Uh, uh, Kyle, when you found out you were actually auditioning for My Little Pony, were you aware of what you were getting into? Should you actually get the, get the part? Uh, yeah, I was. When I was doing Littlest Pet Shop with, you know, Ashley and Peter and the others on, on the show, I, they were all heading to the conventions, and I thought, you know, once I knew auditioning for a character, that that might lead to something. But I auditioned for a number of other roles before that. I can't remember which ones, but it was around... I think season six that I, that they were bringing me in for roles. Wait, there's a season six? <laughs> <laughs> Holy, this is a pretty big show. <laughs> I'm on for a while. Here there might even be a season seven. What? I know, man. That's crazy. Six seasons and a movie, yo. Oh my yeah, god. Movie. It's a movie? First time. Oh, yeah. So cool. That's how you 
What a cool show. Oh, Are you, you still working on your chairs? <laughs> <laughs> Tony Dan's in that? Is great. <laughs> yes. Did you have a question? No, I think you're hallucinating. You're hallucinating. Um, oh. uh, sorry to leave you out of this topic. Vince and Kelly, you guys were recently in China, like what, one or two weeks ago for a convention over there. Yeah. Uh, do you speak Mandarin? I don't speak Mandarin. Oh. No, I speak Cantonese. Oh, okay. You did great, though. Well, oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. So is that what you speak in Guangzhou? I think in like, yeah, I think in Guangzhou you can totally get away with it because it's in like the, the Canton region, but there's a lot of bronies that came from everywhere in China. So the, I mean, they speak all, di there's so many different dialects of Chinese, but like the Mandarin is like the, the dominant and... So what was that like for you two over there? I had fun. Yeah. I had fun. It was, there was a lot of people. I didn't expect them to be, you know, that many people there and... Uh, they're very polite, very courteous, and... They're fantastic hosts. Yeah. Um, we went on some adventures. They took us up uh, right. Canton Tower, and... Mm -hmm. I did a ride. There was a ride up there, like oh, a, yeah. the drop zone Vincent kind of ride. The yeah, drop. Kelly didn't want to come. I was going to go and laugh and take pictures, but they wouldn't let me, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did it by himself. Did it by uh, myself. Kelly, uh, you're actually one of the few... Uh, voice actors who's actually done multiple generations of My Little Pony, yeah. uh, including, if I had to pick one of the previous generations, it'd be Pony Tales, G2. Uh, what was the recording and scene process like back then compared to what it is now? Uh, back then they did it all, because there was a song every episode, they did it all in a four hour chunk. So we record the show now in four, four hour chunks, but they often do the singing separately. Um, so it was a really busy day. Kathy Westlip was actually the, the singing director on that show. Mm -hmm. And that was my first gig, so one of my first gigs. Yeah, so actually, I was like 13. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, this is what, this is how you make cartoons. I don't have to go to school today. It was a great night. It was awesome. Yeah, in fact, uh, a pen pal of mine, he was also in that show. Uh, Tony Samson, who did Teddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who is he? Uh, oh, is he Tony? Uh, he actually works mm -hmm. in construction now. He has two kids. I was, Amazing. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, he was also the voice of Eddie from Ed and Nettie. And I'm trying to see if I can even organize a reunion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he works in construction now. He has two beautiful kids. And he's retired from voice acting, but he loves spending so much time with his children. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were all kids on that show. So it was... It was fun. It was similar in a lot of ways. We were all in the room together, like we do when we record Friendship's Magic. And but the singing was all, all kind of lumped in. It was a very. I remember it being like a very tight day where we had to get everything done in that. Was the uh, uh, now I've seen pictures of I've seen pictures of uh, Daniel Ender when he goes to actually write the music. Uh, he does actually seem to have like a full on band uh, for when he makes the songs, but. Was that the case back in my little point tells or was it all like on a ten dollar casket of keyboard? I don't know how they created the actual music for the show, but my guess is it was probably pretty synthesized. It was like late eighties, early nineties, so I don't think they quite had the budget that that this show does. And they didn't have a Daniel, so I have to admit I'm, uh while the music from that show was not my personal favorite, uh, the one song that stuck the most was yours, Will Make Sweet Music. That song is fantastic. Yeah, and actually Willow Johnson sang that for me. So I didn't even sing that song. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you find out something new every day. <laughs> you guys have something? Speaking of uh, singing, how was it doing these, I, I, I'm assuming you did the singing role for Featherbanks, right? I did, yeah. How, how was that? Was I mean, you've done that <coughs> before in the past, right? Or yeah, yeah, it was... Um, it was awesome. I, actually, Daniel called me in to do a demo for, for the song, and I heard it, and I was like, this is hilarious. I love, like, boy bands. I've been obsessed with them. Like, Backstreet Boys. Like, it started from New Kids on the Block, way back when. And, like, NSYNC. NSYNC was my very first concert. So doing this part of, you know, Feather Bangs was a dream come true for me. Seeing it all, like, because there's, there's, like, three different types of kind of pop songs within that little battle between him and Big Mac so I had a blast I had a ball doing it and then when I was recording the session it was hilarious and they just I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna get so much hate from the bonus from this <laughs> and then Jim's like I know you're, you're always been the douchebags what's up with that and I'm like I don't know you guys cast me so 
there was this one thing though that he Jim kept wanting me to throw in. Uh, it was this little like ha. Yo, baby. <laughs> this little like douchebag laugh. And I'm like, really? You want to put it in there? He's like, yeah, we want more of it. So we just kept throwing it in like randomly in places that it didn't even fit. It was just like, ah. <laughs> for no reason. But no, I had a blast. I, I loved it. It was so much fun. What would probably be the ideal scenario for that, that you personally would like to see your characters get to play out? Flashlight? <laughs> you, just, you just said that you didn't want more right on the hate right I know <laughs> that's possible <laughs> Starlight definitely had a great moment with the equestrian girls, I will say that. That was fantastic. That was pretty fun. Yeah, it's neat. There's been a bunch of questions from fans over the last year or two about, you know, like, wouldn't it be amazing if Starlight met so-and-so? And, you know, a lot of the times we've already recorded an episode <laughs> like that, and I have to go, yeah, that would be, that would be amazing. I hope that <laughs> happens someday. So there are actually a few things that, that are coming down the pipe that will be, that will be fun. Whoa. Um, I always like to see Starlight when she's off kilter, when she's uncomfortable in a situation. I think that's when the characters really, it's fun to play, and it's, so it's always fun when she's not confident and not in control. Um, and, and I actually really enjoyed the season finale of season six, when she didn't have magic to rely on. That was awesome. So any situation like that, because that's, she's so powerful, she can kind of figure out any, any, any problem when she has magic to solve it. So when she doesn't have that to fall back on, it's kind of, I think like a dare episode where someone dares her not to use magic for a week or something, that would be really cool. Yeah, as a former chess player, for me it was like a, a set of pawns going up against someone who has an entire uh, set. That's how I kind of viewed it. Yeah. Uh, and Al, for you? For me, uh, oh man. Yeah, I feel like maybe going into singing a boy band song like yes. over here would be the ideal for Thorax. Yeah, no, no, would have been like a Thorax versus Chrysalis. That that would be also ideal. That'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. You, you have an, uh, an episode coming up airing next week on Saturday. I think it's an episode. Uh, what's that one called? It's already been announced. Mm -hmm. one that involves. That's the you're just baiting him, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, I don't. I signed an NDA. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop trying to make me admit things. Yeah, we get we we get it earlier in Canada, don't we? Not anymore. It's changed. Australia gets it earlier. Australia. Uh, they get they kind of did that at, 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 the, the uh, at the beginning of the season yeah. where the episodes were. I mean, it was almost it was almost hard to keep up with everything because it was just, there was like there was the episode that was released on Discovery Family, and then there was the one on the Canadian Treehouse or something. Yeah, it was the Treehouse TV on Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, so you had like three episodes one yeah. weekend, and just keeping up with that was. I know because I remember in uh, at Everfree, they're like I think Andrew came up to it was like, so you're playing Feather Banks? I'm like I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> He's like, it's out already. I'm like, I still don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then I had to ask Denny, who's the director. I was like, do I know what I'm talking about? Can I say anything? He's like, it's out already. You could talk about it. <laughs> it's on the internet. So, I, so then I talked about it. Yeah, and then it was, it was the, and then towards the end, it was the uh, Australian TV that got the um, Apple Parents episode out about fairly early. Oh. So the one with Yes. Right. You had a question there? <laughs> um, you were talking about how um, you enjoy playing style, Starlight Glimmer when, you know, when she's a villain. Do you have any idea or, you know, that, that you can you know, share that anyone's told you? Do you think that Starlight Glimmer will be, will be able to get some of her scars back once she starts to own her past? And, because you know, I mean, let's face it, rarity, you know, the, the main six can be a little snarky sometimes yeah. and still be good. Do you think they'll be I don't know if she's ever lost it. I think she still has some, they, you know, I think they purposely write her kind of disgruntled teenager sometimes. 
She's got that sarcasm, especially when things get a little too cute and a little too nice. She still has that skepticism, which I really think is fun. So I hope she never loses that. I think that's still there. Yeah. All right, we are running short on time here, so does anyone have any quick lightning round rapid fire what questions? What is, um, uh, it's, what's your uh, daily routine for exercise? Oh. Daily, I don't have one. But I've been trying to do some more push-ups. Me and Kyle went rock climbing, and the last time we did that, it busted my arm. So, uh, so I've been just trying to like do some more, you know, lighter, lighter, lighter things. I can't even do a chin-up right now, which sucks. It used to be my thing. What's your opinion on scope? You better shut up. <laughs> this. Do you have fun trying to find me? <laughs> Questions. What's your favorite donut? What's my favorite donut? It is the honey crawler or cooler. Crawler. Yes. But I did try this one at the in, in, in Cardam. Uh, it was a uh, Earl Grey, an Earl Grey donut. Oh my gosh, it's delicious. Yeah, it's very very good. What's yours? I don't eat bread, oh. but I miss donuts. If you could eat a donut, what would you? Eat? Plain old honey dip. Honey dip. Simple. Sour cream. Sour cream? Yeah, there's a sour cream. Sour cream cake one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. What's your favorite thing you've ever punched on stage? Oh! <laughs> that would, ever wet on stage? Punched. punched. That would be M.A. Larson holding a pumpkin. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that would be funny if you just stopped at M.A. Larson. I know, I would. <laughs> yeah. I did hurt him a bit, though. Just <laughs> I hurt him more than the pumpkin. <laughs> I hate these lines. <laughs> I, I had a stage fight with an actor, uh, Hag Sutherland, uh, and we were in Romeo and Juliet, and it was at the end, he was playing Paris, I was playing Romeo, and he's a film actor, and he came up to me in rehearsals, and he was like, I want this fight to be like real. Like, not just the normal theater one, where it's like, kind of, you put the positions, like, he's like, I want this to be like a really good fight. So every time I was fighting him, it was almost a little real. So I had to like kind of defend myself while I was fighting him because otherwise I was going to get hurt. So I think I had a punch at him and I would really like try to get him almost because it was such an intense fight on stage. Yeah. Okay, we've got maybe one last short question and that's it. Anyone want to take it? All right, we will wrap things up. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks, guys, for coming. Thank you. Tip, thank you for coming, everyone. The next one of these should be tomorrow morning, I believe, 10.30. We'll be there. Yes, have a wonderful rest of the week. How are you? Let's go lounge it. Wait for the...